Hey everybody, it's Ron from Ron's Computer Videos. Hey, something neat um, that I just saw today online that was brought to my attention is uh, some cool stuff that is happening over there uh, on infinitemac.org. Um, largely that they now have the ability to export um, HDA like disk images from the website so you can actually go out there and uh, kind of configure a machine and then save it and actually get it over to your SCSI emulator um, so that was something maybe I wanted to take a couple of minutes this evening uh, to talk about and to show you how to do that um, it used to be kind of in the old days you had to use a Basilisk 2 or Sheep Shaver or something like that if you wanted to actually build your uh, disk image and things like that like on a PC but now you can do it with a website that's way cool. Let's go ahead and let's take a few minutes and check it out. If you're not familiar with infinitemac.org, you can actually access it at that exact URL. Um, it is a really cool website that uses uh, or leverages a couple of different emulators uh, through a web browser so that way that you don't have to go through all the trouble of setting it up at home. So what we're going to do for this experiment this evening is we're going to use the System 7.5 emulator or I'm sorry, uh, sort of emulated instance, um, which is uh, available right here on the website. So um, nothing to really custom customize at this step. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and run it. I'm gonna show you some cool stuff. So here we go. We have ran the emulator and what you'll see that wasn't here in previous versions is this saved HD. Um, what that is, is that's actually a customizable uh, drive that at, at this, time is one gigabyte but there might be uh, a point in the future where they increase that to like two gigabytes which is basically uh, just about the the biggest partition that you're gonna want to play around with on like a 68030 machine so for for the most compatibility uh, probably good to stick with that but in any case um, what we're gonna do is we've got this um, little disk image here and it's it's blank um, there, there is a little readme on it and it basically just says the contents of saved HD are saved in your browser's local storage. You can use this disk to save data across the infinite Mac sessions, which is kind of fun if you're going to just play around with the emulator because you can actually, um, put things in there and then save it for future use. So if it's like, oh, we're going to play like a network game of something that maybe isn't, um, already out there, um, on the infinite HD, um, you can uh, put things in there and then save it and then play around with it later. And it's it's highly compatible with uh, other emulators and things like that. So it's it's this is a really cool new feature. Thank you, Eric Helgeson. <laughs> so let's go ahead and what we're gonna do is <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna uh, select the saved HD. And since we're gonna just wipe it, we're gonna start from scratch. Uh, I'm going to click erase. If you notice here, uh, I'm in a incognito session. So that way that uh, if I close this, it's not going to be my session data and I won't um, actually see this when I play around with it in normal mode uh, or rather uh, it won't be cached. So that way I could do multiples of this if I really wanted to, but I'm just going to click uh, erase disk and I'm going to call this like Mac SD because we're going to set this up for my uh, board machine over here. Erase. And there you go. So now we have a blank drive. It's all formatted and ready to go for use on your uh, SCSI emulator. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to CD-ROMs. We're gonna scroll down to the bottom and we're gonna use the Apple Legacy Recovery CD. And what that has on it is basically installers for like a dozen different versions of uh, Mac OS. And so uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna prep this. And since it's an SE, I say that we're just gonna run 608 just because that runs really, really fast on that machine. So if you've never played with Legacy uh, Recovery CD, uh, basically what you do is you can open it up. There's a, there's a lot of disk tools. Uh, there's a lot of other Apple software and stuff on here, drivers for different hardware. But in this example, this evening, we are just gonna install an operating system. Then we're gonna take our newly created HDA file. We're gonna name it properly for use with a blue SCSI. And then we're gonna copy it to the actual device. So check this out. Let's go ahead and go to Mac OS. Um, you can, if, you, if you're kind of curious about like, well, I don't really know what version of the OS I want to do. It's kind of nice because they have it grouped by CPU type. So I'm going to say, let's go out for the plus SE, SE30 portable, uh, SE, and let's go ahead and yeah, we're going to put 608. 
Okay. What this will do is this will mount all the floppy disk images and then we can uh, do an install. And as it sits right now, uh, Infinite Mac wants to run it kind of at real Mac speeds. So some of these things might take a tiny bit longer than it would with Basilisk 2 or with Sheep Shaver, but I will tell you that um, it is uh, maybe a little easier for new users instead of setting up those emulators to just do it through the website. So let's go ahead and let's switch our disk over to our Mac SE drive that we created and let's do a customized install. I'm not gonna need any printers, so I'm not gonna install a bunch of printers, but I would like to go ahead and install the system software for the Macintosh SE. So it looks good. We're installing it on the proper drive that we just formatted there. Let's click install. And this will take just a second. It's 608, it should go pretty quick. And there you go. It says installation successful. So let's go ahead and say quit. And it'll go ahead and dismount those disk images. We can close all these folders if we're interested in keeping our desktop tidy. And let's take a look at what's out there on that drive. Mac C. hey, there's a system folder. Nice. Yep, and it sure looks like a 608 folder to me. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna export this so we can use it on our blue SCSI in this example. So let's go down here to the bottom. Um, as you see by this little Apple menu, there's some things that pop up when you uh, mouse around down there. Go to settings, and we're gonna say save disk image. Now I will tell you, if you click export, it will export a disk image um, for use basically with Infinite Mac. That's not what we want. We wanna make sure that we pick save disk image. It'll say saving disk image requires a Mac, this Mac to be shut down. And what will happen is, is like the second you click save disk image, it's gonna send a request to the server, it's gonna process, it's gonna download then to your browser. I would not have anything open um, that is unsaved or things you wanna keep before you do this. So just make sure that you are absolutely ready at this point to generate your disk image. So let's say save uh, device image, HDA. And it rebooted the, the, um, the virtual machine. So now it's gonna say, hey, let's go ahead and let's save our file. I'll throw it out here on the desktop. Or actually, no, I'll just save it to downloads. That's as good as any. Okay, so we have our file there. It says saved. Well, that's fine, but it doesn't really meet the compliance uh, for uh, the way that the disk image needs to be named to be used with the emulators, with the SCSI emulators. So let's go ahead and we're gonna pop up a copy here of Disk Jockey which if you don't have a copy of this already, you can get it at discchockey.onegeekarmy.eu. And this is actually a really cool website. There's uh, versions out here for Mac and PC. You download whichever one is appropriate for you and run it. Well, as you can see by the uh, naming convention here, and you can also read this out on the Blue SCSI Wiki, is it wants to be HD00, so that means it's LUN, or it's device zero and LUN0 uh, underscore 512, and then you can call this whatever you want. I'm gonna call this Mac SE, and that'll make it easy for me to um, kind of customize. So I'm just gonna copy this, and I'm gonna go to my save file, and I'm gonna paste it, and that's it. That's it, we're ready to go. So all you have to do at this point is copy it over to the root of your SD card uh, that you're gonna use with your SCSI emulator, and that's it. So we can boot the machine. Let's go over to the bench and let's test it out. Okay, we're over here at the bench now. I've got my uh, my cat Mac, my board Mac, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but it's basically, it's a Mac SC uh, with uh, all my boards and things like that to allow you to use the um, RGB to HDMI to get output to a modern display. So. Let's go ahead and let's power this puppy up. Um, I've already put the SD card in the blue SCSI and we'll see what happens. There we go, RAM test passed. Hey, what do you know, it's booting. Ah, 608, such a fast thing on this machine. But as you see, I've got my, my uh, drive named correctly. Uh, we're basically ready to use the machine. So this is such a time saver, you have no idea. And especially for new people uh, that wanna set one of these up but don't wanna go through all the trouble of setting up an emulator, I think this is definitely the way to go. All right, let's pitch back over to the main desk. 
And that's it, really. Um, I was so impressed when I saw this. Uh, it has really made it simple for folks uh, that maybe don't want to go through all the trouble of setting up an emulator uh, to be able to use a virtual environment to set up a disk image for their SCSI emulator. So um, I wanted to say thank you to the folks at infinitemac.org and thank you to Eric Helgeson from the Blue SCSI Project for working together uh, to make this happen because, again, this is a real boon for people in the community. So, and I love to see stuff like this come together. So I hope that you uh, find this video handy and I hope you find uh, these new tools handy and I hope that you give it a try this week. So uh, thanks again for spending time with me this evening. And as I always say, Apple II forever. <laughs>